So welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss about ratio analysis. So ratio analysis is a very important topic in terms of uh, uh, management accounting, financial management. Okay, and uh, why it is so important is it's because ratio analysis helps to determine how well a company is being run. Okay, and we can compare one company to another company. We can compare the same company over its last five years or like ten years data. We can compare the company with an industry. So we can compare the uh, ratio analysis data with a, a lot of uh, comparators okay so let's see what is the meaning of it a financial ratio or accounting ratio is a relative measure of two selected numerical values taken from an enterprise's financial statement so the numbers that falls into uh, ratio analysis are coming from the financial statements okay so it is just an expression of two numbers so if uh, a company says that uh, they have sales okay they have a sales so we'll take two companies company a and company b if a company says that they have thousand of sales and the company b tells that they have a sales of uh, 500 okay which company is better so we'll say that a is better so in terms of profit okay in terms of profit uh, we can put that uh, a has around 300 as profit and b has around 180 as profit so which is better again again a is better but in only in terms of profit percentage if you put okay only when you put it as a profit percentage that is 300 divided by 1000 into 100 okay this gives you a percentage so this is a 30 percent profitable company this is 36 percent profitable company okay so you we found out that a is better in terms of sales in terms of profit but in terms of profitability percentage b seems to be better okay how come this happens see this happens because the expression of two numbers right it is happening because of the expression of two numbers here so that is where the power of ratio analysis lies okay so rather yeah, initially see ratio analysis was developed around some uh, in 1920s so in 19 before 1920s people were only comparing the uh, single numbers like sales or profit but after 1920s they found out that the expression the relationship between two numbers should be checked so that is where ratio analysis power is all about so often used in accounting there are many standard ratios used to try to evaluate the overall financial condition of a corporation or other organization okay so there are a standard set of ratios which are available for measuring the performance of a company Financial ratios may be used by managers within a firm, by current and potential shareholders, and by cre firm's creditors. So it is a widely applied and used kind of a tool. So it can be used by the management, by the employees, by shareholders, by uh, creditors. So by so many, even uh, sometimes uh, the suppliers of a company might also use it. Okay. So suppliers want to find out whether the company is able uh, to pay the uh, sales okay is able to pay the purchases the company has made so financial analysts use financial ratios to compare the strengths and weakness in various companies and if a share in a company are trader sorry if shares in a company are traded in a financial market the market price of the share is used in certain financial ratios so there are like many ratios like pe ratio okay uh, uh, price divided by earnings ratio like a price to book value ratio there are like several several ratios which are useful for investor purpose okay but we are not going to look at the investor ratios that it's called as investor ratios that that we are not going to look at we are going to look at a certain set of ratios called as uh, uh, a general kind of ratios we don't have uh, uh, any proper heading or anything for these ratios these are like general ratios that can be used so let's see what are the ratios that we are going to cover in this video We'll be looking at liquidity ratios so these measure the how much of cash or cash equivalent assets that the company has related to its liabilities then about activity ratios so how well the company is run in terms of the asset in terms of uh, the fixed asset okay so how well the company is run we also see debt ratios so how much debt that the company has and uh, how well their capital structure is uh, is there profitability ratios how well the company is making profit okay so these are the ratios that we are going to look at market ratios we are not going to look at but just as a meaning 
market ratios or investor ratios are used by investors to find out whether a company stock is good or not so that's about the concept here so so fina financial ratios on their own is not much useful for example if we say that uh, a company has a debit equity ratio okay uh, ratio of uh, 1.5 is to 1 is it a good or bad so we can't tell that okay how can we tell that is we have to compare between companies okay so so for example we can put it like this so yeco has 1.5 is to 1 as a debit equity ratio and another company another company like zetco in the same industry that has around some 2 is to 1 okay so now is our uh, our company much better the answer is yes our company seems to be better okay uh, i don't know why it is it's not coming just one second hopefully now it will be better okay so two is to one so you can say that now our company is much more better we can also compare it across industries. See, we can't say that Z is a correct comparator, right? Z can be a over leveraged company or under leveraged company. How can we know that? We can compare for the industry. For example, if this is going to be an automobile industry, we have to compare the numbers with the automobile industry average. So if you take the automobile industry's average, their ratio might be a little bit different okay it, the numbers could be a little bit different for example uh, it might be 1.88 is to 1 it could be like that so now we can compare our company with the industry average and we can say that we are much more less leveraged than the industry okay we can compare between different periods of the same company for example the same yeco okay this can be in 2021 data we can compare the same company in terms of 2000 2020 data okay at that time they might have had uh, a 1.6 is to 1 leverage okay or between a single company and its industry average i think this is already we saw so we can remove that so the concept is just as a single number it is useless it has to be compared with other comparators okay so we have to make comparisons so we can say that this company seems to be having a lower leverage compared to the uh, competitor compared to the industry average compared to its last year so it is a low leveraged company okay but normally if you see the ideal okay the ideal standard if you take the ideal standard ideal standard the ratio is one is to one okay so that is the ideal standard but ideal standards are generally general applications we don't need to take general uh, data or applications and we need to find out so is the company when compared to uh, ideal it is like over leveraged but when compared to the other numbers the practical useful numbers it is under leveraged so the company is under leveraged okay so that's about the comparisons so let's look at the drawbacks of financial ratios okay so there might be like so many advantages so let's look at the drawback okay drawback of it so number one ratios generally are not useful unless they are benchmarked against something else like past performance or another company thus the ratios of companies So thus the ratios of firms in different industries which face different risks, capital requirements and the competition are usually harder to compare. So you should not like compare between uh, different industry companies. So you, you can't compare like a company like Maruti Suzuki with a company like Nestle. Okay, both are like totally different industries and totally different companies. Financial ratios may not be directly comparable between companies that use different accounting methods or follow various accounting practices. See, it's very difficult to compare even Nestle India and Nestle uh, England. That is itself is like quite difficult. The reason why it is difficult is 
because they follow a different accounting practices. So in UK they might might follow IFRS. In India they follow uh, NDAs. So there is like quite a number of challenges in accounting treatment of various items. So every item will change. Inventory can change. Fixed asset valuation will change. Okay, liabilities valuation can change. So these are like very difficult here. So you can compare companies within a country, but inter company com inter country comparisons is like very difficult. Okay, so you don't try to do that. Most public companies are required by law to use generally accepted accounting principles for their home countries. But private companies, partnerships, sole proprietorships may elect to not use accrual basis accounting. So see the India AS is like applicable for all public sector, all public limited companies. Okay, uh, that is companies which are trading in the share market uh, or um, even like unlisted public. I think trading in the share markets are the public companies. Okay. If a company is a private company, uh, they are not that required to uh, state what rules they are following or what rules they are not following because it is a private company. They don't, they won't be very strict in terms of accounting, accounting, accounting treatment. The last disadvantage is there is no international standard for calculating the summary data presented in all financial statements. And the terminology is not always consistent between companies, industries, and countries. Okay, so if you see uh, in IFRS, it is a standard way of computing all the uh, items in the balance sheet and the PL. But there is no kind of rules or regulation as to how ratios have to be prepared. Okay, so each company can come out with its own ratio and can also give an explanation to that ratio. Okay, that is the drawback of financial ratios. So let's look at the various ratios here and we'll discuss how these ratios work. Okay. We'll also see uh, what uh, what is the way in which they are expressed. Okay. We'll see how they are expressed and whether uh, it's a percentage number or uh, like that. That is the way of expression. We'll see whether uh, what is good. So which is better that also we'll try to check out whether the ratio should be higher or lower that we'll try to find out okay so we'll start from gross profit so gross profit ratio if you see it is a percentage number okay it's expressed in percentage and the higher it is better right in terms of operating profit so uh any any points that we have to note okay any note or something that we'll have so notice why do we do gross profit ratio gross profit ratio is useful for finding out divisional performance so mostly like department a okay or we want to compare with the department b okay if you want to compare those things then we need to have uh gross profit okay then in terms of operating profit, operating profit is again a percentage and higher is better. Okay, as simple as that. What does operating profit measure is? It measures the, the ability of a business to make profit. So usually operating profit should be a a profit number if operating profit itself is a if operating itself is a loss then after uh, thereafter like net profit everything would be a loss making thing there will be only net loss so operating profit should be a positive number there so next one is EBITDA EBITDA is earnings before interest tax depreciation and uh, amortization okay so in operate operating profit operating profit is like uh, we have found out after deducting the depreciation and amortization but it is but EBITDA is like before even taking those numbers into account okay so this is also a, a percentage number it is a higher number okay so why do we do EBITDA again EBITDA is like found out to know uh, the profitability profitability of a business before before uh, 
before the values that are that can okay that can be accounting accounting uh, okay or else you put okay i think we will put it directly itself before interest comma tax comma depreciation comma amortization so what's about the net profit net profit like all of us know it is a percentage number and it is a higher higher the better okay so this will indicates it indicates the overall profit of the company okay so if net profit is higher it means that all the above numbers will be a positive numbers so the next one is roc so roc is also a percentage number and it has to be higher so roc will indicate uh, how much return the company has when compared to the capital okay so when compared to all the other previous ratios the denominator was sales but here alone it is capital employed okay so what is the return that the company is making for the capital employed so this is a ratio okay uh, a key ratio this is a key ratio which investors track okay so it is a key ratio which the investors will track here so let's go to the liquidity ratios so first i'll type first i'll get all the headings here 